Mike McPaio always loved basketball, but after college, he co-owned a successful real estate company. The Los Altos High alum landed a side coaching gig and eventually became UC Riverside's head coach. He was the first Asian American men's basketball coach in Division I and led the Highlanders to a school record 22 wins last season, earning him a recent five-year extension. Our Jill Painter Lopez has more. Now is in his third season as the head coach and is the Big West Coach of the Year. You are the first Asian American Division I men's basketball coach. When you hear that and to know you're part of a, a trailblazing group, what does that mean to you? When I first got the job, obviously my head was spinning, but I didn't even know that until, you know, of course, my athletic director, who's just a marketing genius, I mean, he, he, he found that out, that I was the first of, a full Asian American head coach. Um, and it's funny because when I was an assistant coach, it was hard to get jobs sometimes. There's not many Asian coaches uh, in, in, our, in our world. And there's one really in the NBA, Eric Spolstra and myself. And uh, so it, it, it meant a lot. And all of a sudden, I got more calls from the Philippines. My mom's sending me Philippine um, news, you know, Asian, Taiwan. And, and wow. so it kind of let me know, OK, that, that this is a big deal. Wes, you told Mike when he was an assistant basketball coach here that he was going to be a head coach in Division One men's I basketball did. someday. And I'm not sure he quite believed you. But what did you see in him that led you to say that? So one of the things that I, I focus on a lot is watching the game within the game. And I remember we had, I forget who we were playing, but it was right over here. And after the game, I remember talking to Mike briefly. You know, we didn't win, and he, was, he wasn't in the best of moods. Um, he was an assistant at the time. But I remember saying to him at that point, I'm like, you ready to be head coach? I'm like, I don't think you know it. I'm like, he's like, no, I'm not. I'm like, dude, you ready to be head coach? And he's like, so we talked about it the next day, day or two later. He said, why'd you say that? I'm like, because when I watch how he operates and you look at the game within the game, um, he's managing the head coach. He's managing the sideline and the bench. He's making sure everything is where it needs to be. And then when he got the opportunity, when we named him head coach a couple years ago, um, he hasn't disappointed. You know, I tell people all the time, I will, I will put Mike against any coach in the country. My faith is in Mike to get it done. He may not win, but he's gonna outcoach 90% of the coaches out there. Interesting story. The UC Santa Barbara graduate started coaching at 19 years of age at a junior high in Santa Barbara. And he knew this is what he wanted to do, but then went into real estate, was making money, but really wanted to follow his passion and get into coaching. But I would always coach on the side, I guess. At the time, you could call it a hobby, but I, there were some guys that I saw do it. You know, like Brad Stevens, um, his story was that he was working at an insurance company, and then Andy Enfield, they said that he came from the best business world. So some of these, I'm like, I could do that, I could do that. And that's kind of where it grew from, just this idea that maybe I could become a coach. and. Um, you know, the rest is history. Well, I ended up selling my half to my best friend and business partner who, who always tells me he gave me a great buyout, which he did. Um, but then he's kept killing it for the next two, three years while I was in coaching making nothing. And he'd always say, at least you're fulfilled, Mike. At least you're <laughs> fulfilled. You know, when you live the number of years in the skin we live in um, as people of color, um, there's always the somebody's got to be first. Um, you never know when you're going to be the one to walk through that door. You know, Mike and I are close, like I am with a lot of our coaches. I know his journey. I know what he went through. And there was never a doubt. 